So I come from, from a leftist tradition and uh, I do uh, have a, a socialist uh, views about the economy and I do believe that all human beings are equal uh, and all human beings deserve the same right and, uh, and uh, that freedom is one of the most important and basic rights of every human being. Um, and I abhor violence. Uh, although uh, I, I would not exactly call myself a pacifist in the sense that I don't think that uh, violence is, is uh, never uh, justified, but uh, I would say it is only justified in the most extreme uh, cases when there is no other alternative. Um, so coming from that, um, I would say that it was very difficult for me to, to deal with the level of uh, uh, discrimination and uh, racism that exists in Israeli society uh, where it is actually very commonly accepted that um, supporting a Jewish state means supporting a state where Jews have better rights, are the aristocracy in a way, have, uh, have the, the upper hand and Palestinians must therefore be second-class citizens at best or not even citizens at all. Um, so in this environment of course that I, I felt that, that I needed to, to take some action and to to protest against it um, and I think that uh, through my, my, my main way of doing that was through research and analysis and publishing uh, articles and and my book um, uh, which I think has been a more uh, effective way for me to act at least uh, than to go to demonstrations, which I also did, but uh, uh, didn't uh, feel that uh, I was making enough of a significant difference that way. Um, but um, wh when the, the call for boycott started, I felt that this is something uh, um, that is a, a kind of beacon of hope. Because even though I am Israeli, I grew up in Israel, my family is Israeli, um, and boycott seems to be a kind of policy against Israel and against Israeli society, I think it is really uh, the best uh, hope for a non-violent struggle. Not that boycott itself is the non-violent struggle, but boycott is a, a very key component in the Palestinian non-violent struggle for liberation. Um, and in, in my opinion, the international community's solidarity with the Palestinian struggle is uh, uh, the most effective way of keeping the Palestinian struggle non-violent because uh, in order to be to, 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 uh, not, uh, to, to resist with non-violent means you have to have hope you have to, to understand that you're working within a context that you have allies and that people are struggling together with you if you feel alone and isolated then there, there is no sense in taking the non-violent approach because uh, um, no, th there is nothing to stop uh, the soldiers, the, the policemen, uh, from just shooting you. Um, so that's what also drew me to, to support BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions uh, movement. Samir Makhul, who is a friend of mine, a colleague, uh, uh, somebody who, who has been doing very much the same thing that I do. He uh, um, was uh, the head of uh, Itijah, an NGO uh, based in, in Israel, of uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel, uh, and advocating for equal rights and, and freedom and uh, um, for, for uh, the recognition of Palestinian basic rights. He wrote articles, he went uh, abroad to give talks, pretty much similar to, to much of what I do. but. The big difference is that he uh, is a Palestinian citizen of Israel and I am a Jewish citizen of Israel. Uh, so one night uh, at about 3 a.m., uh, the police and the secret police stormed into his house and arrested him in front of his wife and children, confiscated all the electronic equipment from their house, kept him in prison for uh, about two weeks in which he was not allowed to see his lawyer and during which time he was tortured. And during that time when he was tortured, he uh, uh, signed a confession. Uh, and he was accused basically by the secret police uh, of uh, meeting enemy agents abroad and providing them with information. But when the secret police was asked what kind of information was he providing, they said he's an I Israeli citizen, so he understands Israeli society and can give an analysis of Israeli society. Well, in that, if that is the case, then I, I also do similar things. And the argument was that maybe one of the people in the talks that he was given to was somebody with a Lebanese 
citizenship or maybe an Iranian citizenship uh, and that would be enough for them to to make a case that he was a spy and under torture he signed a confession based on that confession that he's now retracted uh, he's still uh, sentenced for nine years in jail uh, this is something that um, I think it's important to talk about because so far as an Israeli Jew I have been very free to express my opinion and was able to write my my uh, articles uh, without any kind of repression and many of my colleagues who are also Israeli Jews uh, also had this freedom but people who are not Jews don't have that freedom and now the Israeli government being beset by international criticism uh, and feeling that there is a change in the in the global view of Israeli policies towards the Palestinians have started to crack down also on Jewish activists and also started to uh, um, enact laws to make it illegal to criticize the government or to support boycott uh, but the, I think it's a bit too late now to wake up and to say this is not democratic and this is uh, uh, repressive because where were we when these measures were taken against Palestinian citizens of Israel, and of course Palestinians in the occupied territories were not citizens. I don't meet enough, enough Israeli people who speak about equality. You know, there, there is a group uh, of us. Um, maybe it's not a very significant part of the Israeli population. We have to be realistic that we're not going to, to change Israeli society from within. Um, you don't have that hope. No, not at all. Um, but I don't think uh, it is a, a reasonable course of action to take. Mm. It has always been uh, part of European apology or, 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 or uh, apologism. Why they don't put more pressure on Israel to respect international law? They have said, well, there is a, a left in Israel, and if we are gentle enough, the left might change the situation from inside. But if we put too much force. Uh, the right wing will become stronger. This argument has been used as an excuse to justify allowing Israel to get away with murder. Um, the, the, and it is not used, of course, when you talk about other cases in the world of, of human rights abuse and uh, a repression of, of uh, populations, like in, in Burma or in Darfur. No one is saying, well, maybe Sudan should be left alone because the leftists in Sudan would, uh, would change the situation from within. Um, the, the only way to, to change the situation is with external pressure. The external pressure is used, is applied by the Palestinians. It's their struggle. But it is the responsibility of Israelis who, who uh, see the, the situation differently and who think that uh, the current uh, uh, policies are unacceptable to, to support the Palestinian struggle from inside not by trying to overtake the Israeli government, but by uh, providing information to the international community. There is a group called Boycott from Within, which I'm a member of, uh, which uh, tries to, to help by writing letters, by informing people, because uh, we're a group of, of Israelis who are um, following the Israeli uh, media and Hebrew, we're able to, to know when uh, an uh, 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 let's say a singer is going to have a performance in Israel and send uh, letters and ask, please, will you consider uh, uh, not performing in Israel? Uh, will you consider boycotting us? Well, uh, uh, yes, because uh, uh, it's n it's not boycotting us uh, uh, specifically as individuals. It is making a statement that any kind of uh, 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 that treating Israel as if things were normal, as if it's just another country as if uh, it is not a, a place where apartheid uh, is rampant, then that is in fact a, a, an act that helps the Israeli government present itself in the world as a civilized country. Um, Desmond Tutu uh, said uh, that in a situation of oppression, being neutral is to support the oppressor. You don't have the privilege to be neutral when, when you see oppression. Uh, and Desmond Tutu, uh, actually uh, uh, has joined the call for boycott in Israel.